Ben and Davidson here with another Euro Hoop Life podcast. We're interviewing Aaron Maxey and his 2011-2012 Japanese season. Aaron, how are you doing today? Ah, uh, well, Bennett, how are you? Outstanding. We're just stuck in the house, so no better time to get some recordings in. Exactly, exactly. Hopefully, everybody's safe out there. I hope so too. Well, let's get uh, let's get into this interview. Um, give me a little background on the season, on how you ended up in Japan. Uh, did you have an agent? Um, did, where were you just coming from? Give me a little details about how you ended up in Japan. Okay, I just finished playing in New Zealand, and this is the middle of uh, you know summer 2011. You know, came back in July, and right before I left um, after winning the championship, I went ahead and got in contact with the head coach Matt Garrison, who just received the job for uh, the Nagata Alvarex team in the BJ League. So I sent him a message saying, "Hey, you know, if you need a vet, y'all you know, be available." So from the time it took me to get from New Zealand to LA, because I was going to stay at my younger brother's place for a few days, I ended up getting an email. Matt said, "Hey, meet up with me over in Irvine because uh, the right hand man, um, you know, he's in town with me, and y'all you know, wanted to meet you, and hopefully we can get this deal done." So went ahead, went to dinner, and landed a deal, you know, for the uh, for the team. Well, that's very convenient. That's nice. Well, let's um, let's dig into uh, once you got over there, and you said I think in the, in the interview you said uh, a few minutes ago that you waited about two months, stayed in shape. And then you ended up getting over there what time of the year and what happened when you got there? What was the city like? That yeah, so, so the city itself, you know, it was, uh, you know, the tail end of the summer, people were harvesting a lot of rice. Um, the town they got it produced the most rice in Japan. So people are kind of doing their finalized harvest before the winter uh, snow comes. And, you know, the town itself was just more of an industrial town. Um, you had a lot of uh, Russian sailors who were in town who used to, you know, buy a lot of Honda Civics and whatnot, a lot of Hondas in general, and bring them back to uh, Russia. But for the most part, it was just kind of a textile, you know, just mill type of place. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot going on. But all I saw was just kind of mountains and, you know, rice paddies all over the place. And, you know, that's what it was. Wow. So that you were sitting there. So in, how big would you say the team is or how big would you say the city is? Uh, I think the city itself, I'd say maybe about possibly 200,000, maybe 250,000, you know, guessing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I played in cities where it was 30,000 and the next city was uh, the capital of Slovenia and it's 45 minutes away. So there's a, it's, you kind of get a, a nice feel of those small towns where – there's really nothing else going on, so you have a lot of the passion and a lot of the uh, energy from the team, team because you are a celebrity in that small little town. Um, once you got there, no, what were the, once you got there, what were the facilities like? You said it got cold. Did they provide uh, like winter gear, um, that type of stuff? Did they provide shoes, practice jerseys? What were facilities? Were the facilities even warm? Sometimes I've been in uh, Serbian countries where it's as cold in the gym as it is outside. Yeah, that was Japan. I mean, Japan's just a cold place. I mean, practice was cold. Um, the games were cold. But the one thing that the Japanese do is they take care of you. And I mean, as far as, you know, top notch professional, I mean, whether it was your business suit that you needed to wear, you know, going to and from games, I mean, they took care of everything. And uh, I mean, literally, I could, I could get on the plane wearing, you know, the shorts and t shirt that I have on now. And when I got there, everything would be taken care of. I mean, winter coat, hoodies, sweatsuits, backpacks. I mean, we had multiple, you know, practice uniforms. Pr- you know, multiple T-shirts, or this T-shirt for this game, or this T-shirt for this promo, or this polo. I mean, you name it, they had it. I mean, I still have stuff now, you know, eight years later that still hasn't been worn. Yeah. Okay. So they took care of it. Now, how were the uh, the facilities? How was, like, the medical and stuff? And I think you said Australia and Japan are probably the best uh, taking care of their players, any kind of injuries, any kind of things that they may need, whether they're over there by themselves, whether they're over there with a wife and kid, that type of stuff. Yeah, I mean, Japan was top notch. I mean, they took care of everything. I mean, medical staff, I mean, one of the guys on the team, you know, he and his wife, uh, they, they had their first child over there. You know, another guy on the team, he had, you know, two kids. Yeah, you know, everything was taken care of with them, you know, preschool, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was really a family oriented, uh, you know, situation being over there. Nice. Um, you know, again, with the medical stuff, I mean, anything that you had going on, I mean, they took care of it. Um, you know, you know, flu shots. I mean, they, you know, everybody on the team had, you know, flu shots. Um, you know, anything else that needed to be checked, you had an accident or practice, you know, somebody, you know, fell wrong or whatever, everything was taken care of. So you never had to worry about anything. Okay. Awesome. Now, that's what players like to hear because you hear so many horror stories of, 
you, you know, everyone kept asking me, like, hey, when I, when I had my three daughters, did you have them overseas? What was that like? Did they get citizenships? So, no, I ended up having them over in the States, and we just timed our pregnancies pretty well. Um, and last but not least, let's get into the financials of, a, of the team in Japan. How was uh, the overall finance? Um, some teams, the payday is on a Sunday, and you won't see it for two weeks. Believe me. We, believe me. You, won't, uh, you, you will get the money. Just keep practicing. Keep playing. What was it like in Japan for financial assets side of things? Japan, I mean, it was clockwork. At 12.01, you know, the money was sitting in my account here. You know, every, every month, I mean, we got paid once a month. And, you know, they'd come to your house. You know, they'd ask you. You know, I lived in an apartment. Everybody had their own apartments. And they'd ask me how much cash I needed. You know, they'd go ahead and give me the cash that I needed, you know, basically for the month. And literally at 12.01 on the 1st, it was sitting in my account here. I mean, it was perfect. Didn't have to worry about anything. Everything was on time. If anything was going to be moved in, in terms of practice time or um you know change of facilities they're telling you two weeks out uh, it's, it's like two weeks i'm not going to remember but hey yeah i appreciate you telling me but i mean the, it, when i say just top-notch professionalism clockwork that's you know what it was over there and that's what made you know playing there um you know very easy and you didn't have to you know worry about anything is that also what you heard from other teams from other players on different teams same kind of mentality uh, where everything's taken care of yeah, for the most part, I think there was only one team at the time, and I, and I believe they went under. But everybody else, you know, everything was on time, you know, from what I you know, had heard from other guys. Awesome. Well, let's wrap this up. How can players get in contact with you? What do you have going on? Um, and oh, maybe the last 30-second elevator pitch on just overall uh, experience in Japan. Yeah, I, I could be reached on Instagram at Aaron Maxey. Um, you know, I also have a, a lifestyle coaching page. Um, that's Maxey underscore lifestyle. Um, and lifestyle coaching, excuse me. And, um, you know, it's lifestyle consultant, excuse me. That's what it is. But, um, you know, you can go ahead and reach me there. Um, and as far as with wrapping things up, I mean, you know, overall, I mean, just playing in Japan was, uh, it was definitely a breath of fresh air after playing in a lot of different places where you have to worry too much about, you know, off the court stuff or just, you know, your business in general. But, um, you know, it's definitely, you know, a good time, you know, over there. Uh, you know, definitely enjoyed myself, you know, being able to work hard and then reap the benefits of having a good season. And, uh, you know, anybody who's looking to go, go over and play, you know, if you go ahead and handle your business, it's going to be a good time. Awesome. Aaron, thank you for your time and your information. Hopefully this information can be passed down to uh, future players that are looking to sign contracts in Japan. Hey, sounds great. I'm just glad I can do my part and help. Outstanding. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome.